All right, folks, Technivorous here, and welcome to the Technivorous channel. Today, we are going to be doing some modification to this beast. So let me go ahead and grab my coffee here, and we'll take a look at what's inside these two boxes. On the right, you can see the linear rails. We are going to be putting a linear mod on the Ender 3 V2 today. So let's check out some of the other parts. These are the mounting brackets and the parts for the slides that fit over these. So basically the whole kit is right here and we're gonna get this guy all set up today and get our Ender 3 running on some linear rails. This should allow us to do some insane speeds and it should be a really fun mod to do even though there's a billion tiny screws. So we're gonna take our time, go through this kind of slowly and make sure that we do it right. And I'm very, very interested to see how this turns out because this will be my first linear rail printer. So um, I'm very, very interested in the high speed capabilities, especially with this particular machine. It's already a fantastic machine. And I think that with higher speeds, it could be a very, very high throughput machine, pump out a lot of models for me accurately and reliably. So we're going to jump right into this mod right now. Stay tuned. Hey folks, Tech Nivers here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. And here are all the pieces in all their glory. So over here, like I said, we have the linear rails. We have two for the Z, one for the X, and one for the Y. And then we have all of these lovely cobalt blue mounting brackets. Or excuse me, these are more of a powder blue, not really cobalt blue, but they're going to look amazing on the machine. And they're not too far off from this color, although I would say they have a little bit more of a aqua tint to them. A lot of other smaller pieces in this package over here. Um, so I'm going to keep those together until I need them. And we will be going through the process of putting this thing onto the printer following a guide that they have online. So let's jump over and check that out and see what the first step is for getting this linear kit onto my Ender 3 V2 here. And this is our actual kit right here. This is the dot bit BLV Ender 3 Pro DIY upgraded kit. So X, Y axis, belt screws, blah, blah, blah. It's basically listing all the parts. The name is ridiculously long. I will have a link to this so you don't have to search for all of that. If you want to try it out, I definitely recommend it because as I am finishing this mod, I am seeing some definite advantages. And actually, let's jump on down to the bottom of this page because the installation guide is in here as well. All right, here we be. This is the parts list. So here we can see all the pieces that came in our kit and everything we're going to need to put this bad boy on. Let's scroll down a little further and see what the first step is. It's going to tell us about the bed setup. Here we can see what screws go in what hole and how to line everything up. So I'm going to jump over to the printer and start dismantling the setup that is on the Ender 3 Pro now. And we will check this first step out a little bit closer. All right, here it is, our first print with the linear rails on the Ender 3 V2. As you can see, most of the structures came out all right. There is some serious stringing going on on the corners, but I'll explain that in just a second. What I'm looking at to alter in this particular print, especially is the vibrational ringing. You're seeing both back and forth and left and right. And in order to do that, I tightened up my belts here and we are printing another copy. Now, as for that stringing, you'll notice that this part cooling fan isn't even actually hooked up. There's a gap there. Uh, it's getting enough flow to print the model, but I do need to print a part to close that gap and get that air flowing out where it, where it needs to before I will get rid of that stringing issue. So I'm not too worried about that now since I know exactly what is causing that problem. I wanted to get this banding and, and vibration ringing taken care of. And if this one comes out a little bit better, we'll move on to the next step of printing that piece that goes in there to fill that gap. All right, and as you can see, we got the fan on there. We are now running with full cooling. We are gonna print this test model and see how it comes out. This is just a little pawn, and it looks like uh, everything is flowing pretty well on the linear device here. And we will take a close-up look as soon as this finishes up, and I'll show you some pictures and we'll get some detailed looks, so. And as you can see, I have my linear rail Ender 3 V2 cranking away here. One of the reasons I wanted to do this upgrade is because you can get some seriously fast speeds without sacrificing in quality. Now, right now, I have the speed turned up to 300%. That is going to bring it to its firmware max of 150 millimeters per second. And that's how fast we're traveling right now. In order to go any faster than that, I can increase the percentage all I want. But on this machine, I'll need to update the firmware 
in order to get faster speeds. I don't think I'll be doing that. I think uh, the speeds that I'm getting from this right now are very nice. We'll have to take the model off and decide whether or not we think we can go faster without sacrificing quality. So after the model is ready, we'll take a look and see what our results are. I also have a couple other models that I, or a couple other copies of this model that I printed both before the Ender was done and on another machine so we can test and compare uh, and see if this upgrade was really worth it for the Ender 3 V2. And here it is, this is our finished print. This is our first actual model that's not a test print such as the overhang tests on the linear drive. And this is done at 150 millimeters per second, so pretty fast. I'm not gonna increase those firmware parameters because as you can see, there are a few minor defects on here, but for the speed that it was printed at, it came out really, really nice. I am very, very happy with these results. I think we'll stick with this mod and see if we can make some minor tweaks to the profile and dial this in just a little bit more but uh yeah super super quiet with these rails on here super super fast and very very smooth and accurate as you can see so definitely worth checking out the upgrade i have an affiliate link down below if you click on that it helps sponsor the channel and we appreciate that very very much and definitely stay tuned subscribe leave a like if i hit 50 likes or excuse me 100 likes on this video i will do uh, I have video from the assembly. I can edit together a dedicated assembly video in order for you to figure out exactly how I did this because this is an Ender Pro kit and this is an Ender 3 V2. So I did do a little bit of modification. Obviously, I had to go with an Ender 3 Pro hot end fan. That's why the original case isn't on there. Um, but I had to modify that to fit the fans from the Ender 3 V2. So very, very easy, very simple. I'll have that model available in a couple of days. It needs another little tweak just to get the back end to sit a little bit better and seat that screw where it belongs. But it's functioning very, very well. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Stick around, guys. I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out.